Congratulations, space explorer. You've done it. You've traveled light years across the galaxy. But your journey didn't go as planned, and now you're stranded on an alien planet. No backup, no rescue, just you, your ship, and a world full of unknowns. Hey, this is Theos, and you are watching The Cosmological Reality, where we unravel the inner workings of the universe, piece by piece. Today, we're not just exploring theories, we're diving into survival. So, if you've crash-landed on an alien planet, what's the first thing you need to do? Step one, secure your supplies. Before stepping outside, take inventory of your ship. This is your lifeline in this alien terrain. Gather essentials like oxygen tanks to ensure you can breathe safely in potentially hostile atmospheres. Water is crucial for hydration, and food will sustain you as you navigate the challenges of this unfamiliar world. Tools are your Swiss army knife, useful for everything from repairs to building shelter and defense. And if your ship is equipped with scanners or analyzers, these devices are invaluable. They'll help you analyze the atmosphere for breathable air and detect any toxic gases that could pose a threat. They can also identify safe water sources and edible plants, giving you a strategic advantage in survival. Remember, these tools are not just gadgets. They are your eyes and ears in this alien landscape. They will be critical for your immediate survival and your long-term strategy to thrive in this new environment. Step two, assess the atmosphere. Once you've secured your essentials, it's time to venture outside, but tread carefully. The air around you might look clear and harmless, but don't let appearances fool you. Alien atmospheres could be full of invisible dangers, toxic gases, corrosive compounds, or even microbes that your immune system can't handle. If you have a scanner, now's the time to use it. Analyze the atmosphere for oxygen levels, carbon dioxide, methane, or any other unfamiliar gases. The scanner can also detect airborne particles that could irritate your lungs or skin. Look for a breathable composition, ideally one with around 21% oxygen, like Earth. Anything drastically different could spell trouble. But what if your scanner is broken, or you don't have one? That's where observation comes in. Start with simple experiments. Does water boil at the temperature you'd expect? On Earth, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level. A noticeable difference in boiling point might suggest unusual atmospheric pressure. Similarly, test fire. Does it burn easily? A weak or unstable flame could mean low oxygen or a high concentration of gases that interfere with combustion. And while you're testing, keep your oxygen mask securely on. It's your shield against the unknown. Breathing untested air, even for a moment, could lead to dizziness, nausea, or worse. Step three, check gravity. Gravity is an invisible force that can either support or jeopardize your survival. On this alien planet, it's one of the first physical challenges you'll notice, and it can't be ignored. If the planet's gravity is weaker than Earth's, you'll feel lighter, almost like you're walking on the moon. At first, it might seem like an advantage, but over time, the reduced gravity will take a toll on your body. Your muscles, especially those in your legs and core, won't need to work as hard to support your weight. This can lead to muscle atrophy, essentially your muscles shrinking and losing strength. Your bones, without the usual stress they experience on Earth, will also begin to lose density, making them brittle and prone to fractures. On the other hand, if the planet's gravity is stronger than Earth's, every movement will feel like you're carrying a heavy load. Simple tasks like walking or lifting objects could become exhausting, and your joints and muscles may strain under the extra weight. Overexertion could lead to injuries, and in extreme cases, the gravity might even compress your body to the point where you risk serious damage to your bones or organs. So how do you adapt? First, assess the planet's gravity and move cautiously until you're familiar with how it affects your body. If the gravity is high, focus on slow, deliberate movements to avoid injury. Reduce unnecessary physical activity and conserve your energy whenever possible. In low gravity, regular exercise becomes non-negotiable. Stretching, resistance training, and isometric exercises will help you maintain muscle mass and bone density. If your ship has resistance bands or portable exercise equipment, use them daily. Step four, protect yourself from radiation. 
Radiation is one of the most invisible yet deadly dangers you'll face on this alien planet. Before you even set foot outside, you need to understand the nature of the star your new world orbits. Is it a calm, mature star like our sun, or is it a volatile red dwarf? If it's the latter, you're in for a challenge. Red dwarfs, while being the most common type of star in the universe, are notorious for their unpredictable behavior, especially when they're young. They emit intense flares packed with ultraviolet and X-ray radiation, which can bombard nearby planets with dangerous energy. Unlike Earth, which has a magnetic field and an ozone layer to protect its inhabitants, this planet might not offer the same shielding. When you're on a planet orbiting a red dwarf star, radiation is a silent but deadly threat. You might not see it, but it can slowly cook you if you're not careful. To protect yourself, start by using your ship's sensors to check the radiation levels. If they're dangerously high, you need to act quickly. The best thing to do is find shelter. Here's how. Go underground. If you can, seek out caves, crevices, or even thick layers of soil or rock. These can block a lot of radiation. Build barriers. No natural shelter? No problem. Use materials from your ship metal panels, lead plating, anything solid, to create a makeshift shield. Limit exposure. Try to stay out of direct starlight as much as possible and keep your spacesuit on for extra protection. But why is all this important? Radiation can harm your body in serious ways, like damaging your DNA, increasing your risk of cancer, and causing long-term health issues. Without doctors or medicine around, these precautions could be the difference between survival and becoming a victim of the environment. Step five, find water. Now that you're protected from radiation, your next priority is finding water. It's essential for survival, so look for rivers, lakes, or even underground reservoirs. But don't drink anything right away. It's crucial to test it first. Use your ship's water analyzer if you have one, or boil the water to kill off any harmful microorganisms if the water has a strange glow or an unusual smell, it could be contaminated with chemicals like ammonia or methane. While that's interesting, it's also risky. Make sure to purify the water before using it, or better yet, keep searching for a safer source. Step six, search for food. All right, now that you've got water sorted, it's time to hunt for food. But before you start imagining feasts, remember that your survival depends on caution, not risk-taking. The safest bet? Start with plants. They're less likely to chase you or bite back, something that can't always be said about creatures with legs or tentacles. But just because they're stationary doesn't mean they're harmless. Before you start nibbling, you need to test them carefully. First, give them a gentle touch. If they react, like moving, changing color, or releasing anything, you should keep your distance. These could be defense mechanisms, signaling that they're dangerous or toxic. Next, take a good sniff. If you catch any acidic or chemical odors, that's your cue to avoid them. And if the plant seems safe, don't rush into eating it just yet. Always test it on your skin first, a small amount, just to be sure it won't cause a nasty reaction. Step seven, first contact. This is the big one, the moment you've been dreaming about. But let's be real. It's also the moment that could go horribly wrong if you're not careful. If you come across alien life, don't just walk up like you're meeting a new neighbor. Observe them from a safe distance first. Watch how they move, how they interact with their surroundings, and most importantly, don't make yourself look like a threat. You want to be cautious, not confrontational. Now if they seem intelligent, you can take things up a notch. Try using simple gestures, patterns, or even basic math to communicate. Why math? Because it's universal. 2 plus 2 equals 4 no matter where you are in the galaxy, right? But here's the catch. You have no idea what's going on in their heads. Their instincts and biology are a total mystery. For all you know, your friendly wave could look like a battle cry to them. So the key here is patience. Take it slow, be observant, and think before you act. First contact is an incredible opportunity, but it's also risky. The goal? Make it a historic moment not your last one. Yet, as you embrace this new way of life, remember that it won't be easy. This journey will test your body, mind, and willpower. But it's more than survival. 
It's a chance to explore a world no one's ever seen. With each step you take, you'll uncover the mysteries of this alien landscape, transforming hardship into discovery and resilience into adventure.